In today's video, we're gonna be going over how to get this mixed media look 100% digitally. Knock me off my square. Friend Fires always has some of the most fire music videos in my opinion. I really like the aesthetic of like the mixed media. So we're going to be recreating this effect in the Price of Fame music video, but with our own twist on it and obviously 100% digitally. I'll have all the assets that I use in this video linked in the description, like the paper textures, the brushes that I use for Photoshop, some of the presets and just everything else that I'm using in this video will all be linked in the description. You don't have to use those assets. You can use whatever ones you like, but if you do want to support the channel, get some really high quality stuff, I'll have them all linked down below. There's still going to be plenty of techniques that you can take away from this video, even if you don't have any of the things linked in the description. You guys could do me a favor real quick, drop a like in the video and let's get into the breakdown. So in Premiere Pro, go to the start of a clip you want to transition into and take a screenshot of that. After that, open up your screenshot in Photoshop. For this effect, Brent Fies is kind of going like this. So we're going to have a photo in the inside, kind of how they did in the actual music video itself. But if your subject isn't doing something like that, you can always do their eyes, face. You can mask out really whatever you want in the actual picture and do the effect there. So starting off to make it look a little bit more like mixed media, I'm opening up my ultimate texture bundle and dragging on a paper texture. I went with this white one and and turned it to linear burn. That way it just has like these little lines throughout and just has a little bit of that paper texture on there. I then added a little bit of grain and played with the curves and made a clipping mask just over that paper texture. That way it's a little bit more noticeable in our footage. And then also I desaturated everything because there was some blue hue coming through. The first frame in this effect is gonna take the most time and then all the other ones following will be a lot quicker because you already have everything all set up. I changed the curves on that base image just to get a slightly different look, a little bit more bright and kind of faded out the blacks. And then to get that window through his hands, I used the last tool and change the feather to zero and then just deleted the selection once I made it. And then back in the ultimate texture bundle, the paper rips and folds pack, I brought on one of these long rips. That way we can kind of just have a paper rip around the outside of his hands. That way it looks a little bit more like paper texture. I use the magic eraser to erase the inside and then just cut out the bottom part of that rip. And now we're going to use the puppet warp tool just to bend around his hands. Make sure to add a decent amount of points. That way you can control the paper rip completely and then go ahead and bring in however many you need just to fill out the outline of whatever you're doing. Once that's done, we need to find something to put in the inside of that frame. So I went back into Premiere Pro and found this clip and then just split it every three frames. That way I can just visually see three frames at a time really easily. And then I just took a screenshot every three frames. I went ahead and took eight screenshots. That way this effect is going to last eight frames and then make sure to drag them in all at the same time. You might have to press enter a few times, highlight them all and scale them to the right size all together. That way you don't have to worry about scaling them later because if you do it all at once, then they're going to all be the exact same size. From the Ultimate Texture Bundle V2, I brought on a paper texture. That way I can go over all those screenshots inside of the frame. I turned the blending mode to screen and then played around with the curves a little bit. I kind of felt like that background layer was just lacking a little bit more of that like mixed media look. So I brought on another paper texture and then desaturated it and turned it to screen. I went ahead and also added a photo filter, the sepia one, just to that background base image, just to give it a little bit more of like that mixed media kind of look. And then on that base layer to add a little bit of depth, I added a drop shadow and just turned on the noise a little bit. That way it looks like there's a little bit of depth between that frame and then those little small screenshots inside. And then I went ahead and made a new layer and then on that layer just used a paintbrush to kind of have this white paper paint effect. I turned the flow down to 50% and just like everything else in this video, I'll have it linked in the description. The brush I'm using is free for all Adobe users. It's linked on the website, but I also have it linked down in the description. And the technique I did with this one is I just did horizontal lines one at a time instead of scribbling back and forth. I feel like it gave the best look. And then I did that on everywhere besides Brent for the right and left side. I then put that layer of the white paint inside of a group and added levels to it and just brought down the highlights a little bit. That way it looked a little bit more grungy. And the reason I put it in a group is because we're going to be using a different paint paint layer for each of the eight frames. So to be a little bit more efficient with this effect, if you press Control, Alt, and S at the same time, it'll pop up the save window. Turn that to a PNG or JPEG of your choice. And then I would suggest putting that in a folder called like paint effects or something and naming them one through eight. So after you save that, go ahead and turn on that second image. That way you see the second frame in the effect. And then you don't have to do this, but if you want the effect to look a little bit better, I'm gonna use the puppet warp tool on this outline again. That way it kind of just moves and has a little bit more dynamic to it. Again, you don't really have to do this. It takes a little bit more time, but it will make the effect look better. And then let's go ahead and turn off that paint layer, make a new layer, drag that into the group right above that first paint layer and do the same process. The reason we're recreating that paint layer is just to have a little bit of movement. It's going to look a lot more realistic and just better in my opinion. I'd also suggest moving around the paper texture layers. That way there's a little bit of movement in that paper texture, not only inside the frame, but the ones over the overall image as well. And now you can go through and do that process for all of your frames. So then once you've saved all your frames, you're going to want to go to that original starting clip and then drag the eighth one there. And then I just went backwards, making each picture last two frames long 
That way the whole transition is 16 frames long. You can play around with the duration to see what you like more. I found that I like the way that two frames looks, but you guys can do however many frames you want. So when you play that, it's already starting to look like a mixed media effect, but there's a little bit more that we can do to sauce it up to make it feel a lot more whole. Starting off, just nest all the images and the video clip together and then drag on transform. And then inside that transform, change your shutter angle to whatever you like. I had 360 here, but I actually went back later and changed it to 100. I just thought there was a little bit too much blur. And then I keyframed the position and scale to be kind of zoomed in on that frame. And then went 16 frames forward and zoomed out a decent amount, but not all the way. And then I went to the end of the whole entire clip and then zoomed out all the way. That way, the majority of the movements in those first 16 frames, but not all of it, it actually continues to zoom out throughout the course of the clip. After that, I made an adjustment layer last six frames over everything. And then from Tiny Tape's Fast Movement V3 pack, I brought on the shake transition with flash just to have a little bit of transition in. And then I made another adjustment layer last six frames right where that picture frame kind of ends and then brought on the aggressive hit with a flash also from that Fast Movement V3 pack. If you're interested in those presets, I'll have them linked in the description with everything else. Now the effects starting to come together, I'm going to add Dehancer on that overall nested layer, turn the halation, some film grain, and then some vignette just to give it a little bit more of like that mixed media grungy look. I also brought on my film like LUT, again, just making it feel a little bit more like mixed media, grungy, and everything. And then finally, I finished everything off with two camera sound effects and a marker sound effect during the painting sequence. That's pretty much all I got for you guys in this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed. I really like this aesthetic and style of effects. It's always been something that I've been interested in. If you go on my channel way back to the beginning of all my tutorials, I've always been doing this style. So it's something that I really like. And that's why I made the Ultimate Texture Bundle V1 and V2. And because of that, I'm currently working on the Ultimate Texture Bundle V3. It's going to be similar to the V1 and V2, but there's going to be a lot more options, a lot more pre-done stuff for you. That way it just saves you a bunch of time and a lot more customizability. If you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. If you haven't already, drop a like on the video. If you're not subscribed, be sure to be subscribed because I'm uploading a video every single day of this whole entire month. Everything that I used in this video from the paper textures to the brushes, to the sound effects, presets, LUTs, everything will be linked in the description if you're interested. But like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have your own paper textures, your own sound effects, your own presets, whatever you really want, feel free to use them. You can use the same techniques that I used in this video and apply them to your video. But if you don't have those things already and you want to support the channel, you want some high quality assets, I'd highly recommend everything that I used in this video. That's all I got for you guys in this one. I'll See you tomorrow. Peace.